a very difficult question. It's a bit controversial. I myself had dug very deeply into this topic on and off at least 20 years, minimum. The reason why I don't get into the topic yet simply because I've been tied up with too many issues and this seems to be controversial enough that if I were to... Uh, I kind of... It's the worst thing that it can do to a scientist that you're afraid to ask a question. That happens to me. Simply because the issue is so politicized. But I can assure the audience that this whole problem is not solved. So let me try to explain how I best understand this global carbon budget, uh, CO2 budget, right? It is actually, I call it a puzzle, that essentially, if you ask yourself, where is all this uh, carbon this reside in the whole system, right? The amount is estimated to be of the order of 750 to 800 gigaton. <clears throat> Seven to 800 here. And ask yourself, where is the rest of it? It's sitting in the ocean, ocean sediment, soil, trees and plants and all this other stuff. Human, human. We are carbon-based material, boy. Okay? And the, the puzzle is indeed. And, and of course, what is the amount? The amount is huge. Huge in the, in the President Donald Trump way of saying it. <laughs> is that these things is of the order of thousands tens of thousands and hundreds and thousands of gigaton versus 800. So, why is it that there's so little amount where the system is actually saturated with this carbon, right? Because we're all carbon-based. And that's the puzzle. That's a real scientific mystery. And the way, the way that the IPCC school versus, let's say, the most promising work that I've seen so far is from Professor Herman Hardy from Helmut Schmidt University is exactly what we just say that we realize that the system is dominated by season if you ask yourself how much does the forest emit this fluxes of simply because of photosynthesis and then decay of the material over season those things are of the order of two three hundred gigaton per year on that just that one little thing alone we haven't even talked about the ocean yet okay i'm sorry right and the Strong claim, I would say, unverified claim by IPCC school and all these dogmatic people. Okay? And it's, it basically can be best typified by this, this group from Bern in Switzerland. They have a specific global carbon budget models that assume in science, assume assumption is extremely important to understand what it means. They essentially have not account for these things, this, this breathing of the thing. And simply because they assume that whatever is emitted is going to be assimilated exactly. So if it's uh, emitting, let's say, 255 gigaton in 1978, it will suck back 255. That's what they assume. In science, those assumptions, I think, one should allow to be challenged them. Please, give me a break. And according to those guys, you're not supposed to challenge them. This is why when Professor Herman Hardy published a very strong paper last year, the 20, 2017, he immediately came under attack, right, for questioning how the global carbon budget works. He actually can produce a model that doesn't require the, the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to stay forever, like tens of thousands of years or even hundreds of years even. His modeling shows that the requirement for the atmospheric uh, carbon budget to come in, in kind of balance with the rest of the reservoir, which is from, you know, like I mentioned, ocean, deep ocean, coastal region, that's also store strong amount of uh, carbon uh, sediment, you know, and, you know, what have you. The whole system is very, you know, active and reactive. So it's, it's very dynamic in that sense. It's not sitting still and emit exactly 251 come back 251. Next year, 255, come back 255. No such thing. And he, he pointed up to this way of modeling and then he add a constant term to the equation to try to solve this whole problem. And he shows, he shows very clearly that to require the system come into balance and then so that you don't have excessive carbon dioxide remaining in the atmosphere because I told you the problem is why there are exactly only 800 or so, right? Not so much compared to the reservoir. So, he shows that to not have excessive carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, 
you require the system to suck it back really quick so you need only four years in resident time which means on average when this thing come out the most you will have a chance to stay is four years then you get pulled down again and then get into one of these reservoirs one way or another ocean surface and what have you right and just like the ocean if you warm it just like your soda can right if you warm it up the bubbles disappear that's when you're going to drink steel beer you know you let it sit for one year that's, that beer i don't want to drink i want to drink beer with a lot of carbon dioxide right and and same with the ocean if you warm it up more carbon dioxide it fills. if it's slightly cooler it will take in less and for the ipcc type of model they assume this thing must exactly balance nothing else matter the only thing that matter is when we burn our carbon dioxide uh, uh, from our uh, combustion of our uh, you know cars and you know, and and even in cookings and all kinds of things that this is the only thing that contribute to the rise but professor hardy shows that you can fit their results as good as anything else but lead to a very different dramatically different conclusion where the atmospheric resident time of the carbon dioxide is extremely quick I understand why these people are confused and also wanted to uh, 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 to say that this is again this is one of the problem I have to say if all my understanding of this subject I believe again it's a very bad thing for me to say that I believe that Professor Herman Hardy has the right to ask the question just like I actually I wanted to ask this question <laughs> I don't have the talent to solve the problem but Professor Hardy has solved it in some sense for us and I have checked his work very carefully. It looks to be very high quality. And then so far, IPC has not been able to find problem. And you know how they assert their claim that they are right? That he's illegitimate. He's not a climate scientist. The same old nine yards about nonsense. That is not scientific argument. And worse yet, they allow a counter scientific paper to be published and don't allow his reply to it. This is where the censorship beginning to come in. This is now we're talking about science censorship, another area of domain that is highly flawed and one of those very consequential problems of how you put when you politicize science. We don't want to get into that. Let me just finish it. I really think that this global budget question is all completely unresolved. Simply because of all this simple point that I try to point to you about. And one more thing that I personally that not many people uh, even thought about it. Every time when they say that human emit about 8 gigaton, okay? Actually, 6 of them is supposed to come from this burning of fossil fuel. There are 2 additional gigaton that they claim is responsible by <coughs> chopping down of the tree. I've been possible, uh, puzzled by that claim for a very long time. For a simple reason. I hope the audience will get it. Chopping down of the tree. I always ask myself, how, why, why would any people in any decent mind add the two to the six? That's a very different process. Chopping down a tree only reduce your, you know, your sink, which means there's no sink to it, which means when there are CO2, it won't come down. But it didn't cause as a source. So how do you actually add the two so conveniently? By the way, I have dug very deep into this area of forestation, reforestation and all that. If you think that they can account for the 2 gigawatt per, gigaton per year for that forest uh, land changes, good luck. It's not true. It's clearly a problem. Another problem is that it's been found recently that large part of the world desert is actually a net source of atmospheric carbon dioxide. And part of the secret is that most of the ground of the, uh, of the sand has some water somehow. And that apparently is enough for some biological life form to govern this stuff. That is one of the most surprising things if you actively ask questions. And this is where I try to say that these whole issues are not resolved. It's a mistake. It's a big, big mistake. This is where the problem is. Because they have a policy prescription. This is the way that in which that I felt that the world is going into a very wrong path. Like, like El Go asked me, do, do, you mean, do, do, do you mean that uh, you're going to challenge this uh, 2,000 RPCC scientists for getting every, uh, things wrong? And, and, and you, who are you? Willie Soon, that's all I am. Willie Soon, who are you? Willie Soon. Who, uh, are you going to challenge this 2,000 scientists? Uh, yes, I am, I say. I simply don't understand the question. Do you, Elgon? Can you explain to me? How does it work? Right? 
There are so many of these questions that is fully unresolved. Pretending that it's solved just because you want to propose your policy solution is extremely foolish and dangerous, really. In fact, the only experimental evidence that exists today about the impact of the carbon dioxide rising, that one, no one is challenged. That one, we all agree, by the way. We just don't know what source it is, right? At least I would say I don't know. Oh, when you say you don't know, they say, oh, you are so bad. You, you must be taking money all over the place. You know, you must be really corrupted. You really want to kill your children. Every day you wake up in the morning, you want to kill your children somehow. And, but they didn't ask, right? They didn't ask exactly the right question that I asked Helgo. The only evidence we have of the impact of atmospheric carbon dioxide is that the planet is greener. That's the only evidence. We cannot measure in the temperature. Can you believe it? That's about the best summary you could have of the system. Because atmospheric carbon dioxide ultimately is plant food and is very stimulating for biosphere. And that has been known for a long time from biology. But of course, the IPCC school is able to contaminate all the, all the biological sphere. Invoking science, this and that, National Academy of Science, Nobel Prize. No wonder they're powerful, right? And then they keep saying, are you willing to challenge? Why are you challenging? Who are you? That sort of thing. No, science is like that. It doesn't matter what you are, what you, no matter how crazy you are, or beautiful or dirty or whatever. It's what the facts are. When the facts is not you know, going along your way, you better step back. So they have not been able to explain. Elgo has not answered my question about cutting the carbon dioxide down and you're going to harm the biosphere. Are you going to be responsible for it, Mr. Gore? He clearly do not want to answer that, right? All he wants to do is that he wants to cut carbon dioxide. By the way, the great Freeman Dyson also say that uh, <laughs> he's afraid that ultimately China is going to charge us something for, for the free CO2 that they emit that is going to come here. He basically was worried about that problem. I say, Freeman, that's not a problem uh, in that sense. It, so, because it's, it's, it's food, it's basically a, a fertilizer for the atmosphere. And, and why would you want to cut it down? You have to ask a serious question. Why you cut it down? And also cut it down. Can you change the weather pattern? Can you change the atmosphere? They keep understanding, they keep... Uh, cast it in some very strange and pseudo science. I say pseudo science simply because I just show and discuss that they haven't got the science right. They cast it in some probabilistic terms and all this other strange voodoo language, including even polluting all the IPCC about, about saying about uh, confident level, the, the st statement that we are 100% sure is 99% confident, 95% confident. Those are all sociology and actually pseudo science. They are not science. And they have been corrupting every area and every aspect of the question that they don't allow free thinking, doesn't allow free inquiry, doesn't allow free press in some sense because they want to silence all of us just in case nobody can hear us. So perhaps that uh, is better in that in the echo chambers that they built for themselves, which is really a, a big problem.